Hey guys, welcome to this video. We haven't done a tip video in a while, so I figured it would be nice to roll one in uh, instead of a Meet the Collection this week. And so the tip that I'm gonna present to you is one that I've talked about in the past a little bit and hinted at in my last video, but didn't end up doing, uh, was how to measure your snakes. Uh, a lot of people ask these questions, a lot of people have different techniques, so I'm gonna show you something that I do that helps me get the most accurate measurement that I can. So what we're gonna do is show you what we do here. And uh, I got a couple of snakes we're gonna use, my female spotted python, right over there right now. I'm letting her get stretched out, move around a little bit and get ready to get measured. So stay tuned. So you can see, as I told you, I've got my female spotted python out there. She's periscoping a little bit right now, kind of staying still. What I'm going to want to do is encourage her to move a little bit because the more she moves, the further she's going to stretch out, ideally, as long as you get her moving in a single direction and not constantly backtracking over her own body. Sorry about the traffic going by. Nobody goes by this road until I try to start filming. Um, now, as far as equipment goes, obviously you're going to need a tape, tape measure or something that measures length. But the mistake that a lot of people make is trying to run a tape down the side of the animal. And that's not really going to help you uh, because the animal has contours within its body. And as you can see right now, she's in different directions and whatever. If you were to run a tape measure, you're not going to get a totally accurate thing. So what you can do is take a string or anything pliable with some length. In this case, most of us that are old like myself have a million of these old phone cords lying around from when phones used to be attached to the wall junk we all save for no reason that we think we're going to use someday let me just catch up a little bit here to her and so what you can do now is you don't even need the tape measure right now save that for later you get a starting point on this here and what i'm going to do is get up next to her head and now i'm going to touch her a little bit just so that i don't spook her with my movement around her so depending on how tame your snake is you could either, you know, touch right to the top of their head. You see, she doesn't want me to do that. Um, so now I'm going to let her move a little bit. Try to stretch her out. Let her relax. See that it's just me. That I have no intention of harming her. Um, sometimes when snakes get outside, they get a little bit, uh, I don't know what the word I want to use is. Less patient, maybe. They're, they've got more of their freedom. They don't want to deal with your shit as much. Um, but what we want to do is, is get as close as we can to that starting point. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this onto her and I'm going to hold steady at different points along her body as she's moving, staying with her movement so that I can get the most accurate measurement. So now at this point, I know that she's at that length. Now let me just grab her so she doesn't go into the stone wall here. And we can do this more than once. So now what we're able to do is we can stretch out our line and then measure our line with the tape measure. So I still have my hand held where it was. I'm gonna to try to get a decent amount of this out here. So I know that she's not quite that length, so that's more than enough. Hopefully you guys can see this all right. So now what I can do is get to the point I measure her at right there. Hold on to that. Stretch this down our tape. And you can see from that she is exactly just under five feet. So let me grab this so you guys can see it. So that is where her length is at based on that measurement. 58 and almost three quarters inches. So just under five feet or 60 inches. So now we can try to do one more measurement again, just to test how accurate that is. See if we get the same result. And obviously you can repeat this as many times as you'd like. So let me grab her again. Come here, darling. I know. And I've always guesstimated she's right around five feet. So I did pretty good because this is the first time I've ever measured her. 
So now we're just gonna do the same thing again. Make sure I have enough free line. I don't run into any issues. Of course, she's taken off out of camera again here. Uh, come here. For a snake that's never like this, of course, when I go to make this video, this is always what happens. So get used to this kind of stuff if you're keeping reptiles because this is what they will do to you. Make you look foolish all the time. Come here. That's my foot. Oh, I have never, ever, ever seen her be uncooperative in any manner until today. But once again, that's just how these things go sometimes. So in this case, we're gonna do this. Come on. <laughs> She's on to me now. Oh, this video is gonna look like shit. But this is the reality. They don't always cooperate. So sometimes you're gonna have to uh, improvise a little bit. This is not going to be perfectly accurate this time around. Um, you know, unfortunately we got one good one, so we'll roll with that. And we're only off about an inch this time. Uh, and like I said, it wasn't as accurate, so I don't feel totally terrible about that. Let me adjust this real quick. Hang on one second, I'm going to grab her so you guys can see her with me here you know i am just shy of six feet so you can see that even next to me she doesn't appear to be that length she's not sitting the same way she was when she was on the ground and we were following the contours of her body so that's why it can be hard to judge now one of the ways i've been able to judge her a little bit better is in her cage because i know her cage is four by two and she'll run down the side of it sometimes pretty good and it gives you a pretty clear indication that she was well over four feet um, and I, I guesstimated about five and I was pretty close. So we'll grab another snake and we'll do another measurement. Hopefully that one will cooperate a little bit better than she did, uh, making me look like a fool here. But like I said, I don't edit this stuff for that. How they behave is how they behave. So she's not being bad. She's not being rude. She's not doing anything she's not supposed to. She's just being a snake and she's got some independence out here and she wants to enjoy it. Nothing wrong with that. All right, now for the next snake that we're gonna try to measure, I've got my female olive python out here. Now, one thing that's important that we didn't talk about yet is cleaning off this line in between snakes. So we used it to measure the spotted python. So let's put some sanitizer on there and we're gonna run this through. Hopefully she's gonna take out the camera. Just as an extra safety precaution. You know, the spotted python doesn't have anything to worry about, but doesn't hurt to be safe and she is definitely gonna take out the camera. <laughs> All right, let me move her back into frame here. Now, another thing that I didn't talk to you about with the first animal is because I use this to measure, I do have markings, which hopefully you can see for one foot, two foot, three foot, that makes it easier. My tape measure that I have with me only goes up to six feet. So I, I can use those lines when we go to measure to know where she's at. Of course, she's doing what we want, which is moving a lot, but I need her to stay in frame for you guys. So we'll just drag her way over here and we'll start trying to measure her. So in this case, I'm gonna start with the end that I have marked, which is the other end, I think. And I do have slippers on this time just because she tends to uh, react a little bit more to skin contact. So just in case she hits my foot, that's just to kind of help myself out here. She's a pretty confident animal, so as long as I don't do anything to totally spook her, we should be good. I'm going to try to uh, get up as close as I can to her head and neck in a second. Let me just get a little contact with her, kind of warm her up to the idea that I'm going to be touching her. measurement starting point and then we can go I know I'm sorry darling but you're a little bit bigger so it's a little bit tougher with you 
position right there to start. And once again, I'm gonna hold onto her body, following the contours to maintain as much of an accurate measurement as I can. Make sure you keep the line nice and loose. So you can keep moving it along her body. It's not perfect, but you'll tend to do a little bit better than you would otherwise. Looking like I got right about nine feet there. I got the eight foot mark into here. So we'll measure at the eight foot mark. And I got nine feet exactly on the button. Let's try and do one more time with her if I can. She's taking off. No skin on skin. <laughs> no. We know better. She has no interest in like coming at me as like a food response. But once they touch skin, there's just something about her that just triggers that response, even if she's not thinking about it. She was a little high strung in her cage today, nothing crazy. Uh, but it did take me probably a good six or seven minutes to get her out, um, just because she is food responsive in her cage, as a lot of Australian stuff can be. She can be a little bit tougher to maintain her lines just because olive pythons have such soft scales in comparison to a lot of other snake species. So you gotta hold with a little bit more force on her than I would if I was doing this with like a rock python or a Burmese python or something along those lines. So let's see where we're at this time. Got my eight foot mark again there. And spin this around. And this time I got about nine foot two. So we can safely say that she's nine, all of nine feet, possibly a little bit bigger. Go over and take a look at her real quick before we end this. It looks like it's about to rain, which it's not supposed to. It's supposed to be sunny. And then of course, as soon as I bring out the iridescent snake, the sun goes away. But you can definitely see she's much larger than the male we had out earlier uh, this season. She probably has a good two and a half feet on him, I would wager. Plus, she's just built a little bit bigger. Uh, but one of the things that, you know, those people that really do well with olive pythons hammer on is you do not want them to get obese. You do not want to overfeed them. Uh, a lot of people even said when I was buying an adult animal to be careful because it, she could already be ruined. In this case, I knew who produced her and who had kept her, so I knew how she was fed. Um, and, you know, she's in perfect shape for what I want. Absolutely prime. I am currently hitting her fairly hard with food. She hasn't eaten in about 10 days right now. Uh, but she ate like three rats within the span of about seven or eight days prior. Um, you know, as I'm, I'm hoping to still push her to an ovulation, I don't think she's going to at this point. I think she would have now. Um, I just have not had success with these olive pythons. I don't know what it is I'm doing wrong. I cooled the shit out of them. I stuffed her with food. I pulled her off of food when she was cooling. Um, usually people have trouble getting the males to actually breed them without a, another male. I have not had an issue with that. He breeds her like crazy. I just can't seem to get any offspring. Uh, and he's about six years old this year. So he's definitely old enough to where he should be getting it done. And she's 10 years old this year. So she's old enough as well. Uh, but we'll just keep going. I love watching their funny behavior outside. So we will cut this short so we don't get too long. Hopefully that helps you guys measure your snakes. And uh, we will see you next time.